Good morning, YouTube. I'm just having to share what's going on just now. <clears throat> I've got myself a wee bit emotional at the reaction of the church. To the... Obviously, there's, there's been a church me too. Which I never thought would happen. So that in itself... Um, is just so powerful. I have been dealing with women like this, women Vita Springer, uh, all my life. Uh, they, I'll let you hear, I'll let you hear Rita. She's speaking regarding the latest scandal about um, one of our pastors in our church, Robert Morris, you know, had abused a 12 year old girl and passed around other church members when she was younger. She's now an adult survivor. Um, and I'm just, I'm just still sort of even reacting to that, that this pastor who was close to the throne, as they say, had this kind of background. And when you look at the men who were in power, right up until all this was exposed, there is a, a theme now with these men in power. Next to presidents and princes, presidents and princes, and kings and sheiks. But we're, we're not allowed to speak about the patriarchy. That's the, that's, that's the, the male supremacists that think that they're better than, than women and, and more superior, ruling, using a system of oppression. And whatever holy book they use, it's the same effect. You know, there's, there's varying degrees of oppression for women within religion, but I've yet to find one that doesn't abuse, it's, it's not intrinsically misogynistic at its very core. Um, and, you know, written by men who are just steeped in a mentality that everything run about them is their property to be attained as territory. And that crosses every religious, but you know, all social, religious, political boundaries. Men like that are in every single country, every political party, and every group of men that exists as a male supremacist there. I'm fucking fed up with them. Look at what they do. And they've got their handmaidens. I'm so angry. But at the same time, I'm experiencing this kind of... It's like, you know how when you push down tears, right, and you, and you just, you never cry about that thing, you know? You just put it away, lock it away and try and forget, and it just keeps surfacing, doesn't it? That's what I find anyway, you know? And my sadness about how my sisters and myself have been treated by your sisters in the church, and I have spoken about it, and it's like, right, well, shut up now. But these people have never taken any responsibility and they've never even apologised their own what they've done. Robert's only owning what he's done because his victims spoke up. So, a brave woman that spoke up because she knew she was going to face this. You've got to get back to, like, what Jesus is saying. Not what whacked-out theology is saying or what we wanted to say. So it's like, where's our stance now as a church? Sit in the in, in the seat of scoffers and point our finger and be like, you can't trust the church. Look, I'm not going to church on Sundays speculating and questioning authority. Mm -hmm. Why not? Is it, is it a bad thing to self-protect yourself and, and other women and children and girls, you know, from predatory wolves within the congregation who are in leadership positions who can do great harm. I mean, like, wh where's, the, where's the empathy? Because you could sing about worshipping God all you want till you're blue in the face when you treat these people like this. You're not worshipping God. And, and as much as this is all nice with the piano music behind it and stuff, you can see the energy coming for you here. This is about control and dominance and I see fear and I see rage. And I know, because I've I seen it in the women that protected my abuser, the exact same look. How dare you threaten my stability? That, that, these people shouldn't be in ministry. Sorry, Rita, but the fact that you've put the ministry before the people that you're supposed to be leading in worship, that's disqualified. You, you've, you've been worrying about your 
financial security, which is completely natural, but at the expense of the victims. So by trying to save your financial security by attacking victims like this, you'd actually look, you know, it could probably lose you. It's devastating when you, when you take the wrong side. You can't just sit in the middle and then shame the children and the adult survivors that are sitting there that might possibly be being abused right now and they're looking to you and the other women in the church to see what your reaction is and they've, they've got you and Lisa Bavia speaking like this. I'm just so glad about the comments that happened below this video because, you know, otherwise we're, we're just being constantly humiliated and offended against again, you know, that this is the kind of enabling abusers. I'm not going to go in there. I'm not going to go into church and be like, you know, I don't trust my leadership. I'm not doing that. That's not. So you're in leadership. So you're basically speaking about, you're basically telling people, don't question me. If, if you were referring to another church and another pastor right now, and you had no reason to, you know, suspect that the guy had done anything wrong, then that would be a fair enough statement if there had been a few, you know, gossipy, you not know, like malicious gossip or whatever. Like the way some of these men are trying to portray it. They're trying to say, well, this is all just malicious gossip. But you actually, you know, the bigger problem, the, the, prob the bigger problem is the malicious gossip. The, the bigger problem that needs addressed here is just glaringly obvious. And a lot of people in the church have, have they've woken up and, and they're not tolerating this anymore. Not what the Lord has asked me to do. The Lord has asked me. Right, so now you, she's, she's using, she's bringing God in to, you know, strengthen this position that she's taking. Like, like, this isn't just me that's saying this, right? I'm telling you as well, because God's telling me, therefore he's telling you. When I walk into the building to find community and, and find position. a body and a band of believers that want to press into worship and love Jesus. Yeah, but you know, that's your faith and that's what you want to do. And I respect the, Christian, the Christians that want to do that. That's where they're at in life. It's, not, it's none, none of my, but I don't want to influence anybody away from the church unless that church is actively enabling an abuser like Robert Morris or Mike Bickle or Alan Scott in the Glasgow South West Vineyard, friends that he was connected to who enabled um, and platformed and paraded this guy and his 14-year-old girlfriends, you know, in their church, you know, sanctioned his grooming of <coughs> underage girls. You know, when, when he put a ring on one of her fingers, mine, at the time, but the church were going to marry us. The guy had been grooming me for I was 14. You know, I was what, 16, 17 at that point? 16. I mean, the grooming that you brought in, it's like, you're, it's like your, your feelings and your wants and your dreams and your life, it, it doesn't matter to these guys. You're there to be groomed to be a wife, to see if you're wife material so that they can practice on you. You know, they've got, they've got a crying, talking, walking, living doll in their minds. These are the guys you want to just step away from. You don't want to reward them with a platform or a, a marriage and children. These are the guys that use women's trophies and, you know, objectifies. And, you know, we platform it and people say that feminists that point it out are just old fuddy duddies and ugly old spinsters, right? Well, I, I'm... <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, like, it's a good way to try and just shut women up, isn't it? And, and, and this is the whole aim, is to just get us to be quiet. Us and the Baines, just go away, because the men are here and we're going to mansplain everything and deal with it. I'm just so fed up with it. He's making an absolute mess of everything. And I'm talking about... I've, I've got to say this, haven't I? Not all men. Because I'm talking about the male supremacists and men's rights activists. Um, and they're in the church. And the misogyny. That's what this is in this woman here. It's... It, I, I just hear misogyny. She's talking to, she's using her teenage daughter to shame people instead of saying to her daughter and teaching her that that's, she's an error. You, that, you know, you don't walk about, you don't walk about completely thinking bad at every single person without any evidence, but you definitely have to make sure that you pay attention when red flags are there. You know, like what, why would you know what to protect your sisters? It just seems really strange. And then talk, talk about worshiping God. I don't think we're supposed to be sus, you know, as my, my teenager that. would say. I'm not going to walk into church and be like sus, you know, of everybody in church. I'm not doing it. Don't do it. And that, back you know, to that's life. a straw man as well, being sus of everybody. So she's just basically trying to paint it. That, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to have um, doubts, 
which are completely natural after what's happened. You know, a mature leader would be saying, you must be feeling completely, like your trust must be totally broken, you must be having a crisis of faith at the minute. That would be somebody that, that has acknowledged what's actually going on here. But um, Rita, Rita here, she's, she's, she's more interested in what's something else. And so I didn't know that she was a worship leader initially when I first um, watched this. But as I say, the, um, the comments are just brilliant.